Welcome back to our coverage of the 18th Olympic Winter Games. Sometimes in television you're given jobs that you think you're really going to enjoy and other times you might wonder if you're going to get a word in edgewise. This is the latter, I think, because it's, <laughs> it's great to welcome Stephen and Danielle and Belinda. We've had a marvellous time at White Ring and we've watched these two uh, finish 13th in the competition. We've said it probably 10 times, but congratulations once again. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You've finished using our phones and faxes and <laughs> computers. Yes. You don't want the studio to move three feet to the left or anything, do you? <laughs> That's okay. Um, the morning after the night before, how do you both feel? Firstly, Danielle. Um, I feel, I, I'm relieved that it's over. I, I'm sad that it's over. I, I have mixed feelings. I feel happy with myself with what I did last night. So, yeah. I'm just a bit tired today. <laughs> I'm a bit tired and emotional. Stephen, what about you? Um, I think the same thing. I mean, it's it's a relief that everything went well and it's all finished and done. But on the other hand, you sort of, I don't know, it all went so quick. I, you know, you'd yeah. like to do it again. It went really yeah, quick. It did. It went very fast last night. Well, Belinda, of course, who coached you for a long time. I think she had a bit of trouble actually commentating because she got a bit emotional about it all, didn't you? Oh, yes, it was the first time I was quiet for a little while. <laughs> it, did, it did sort of feel like that you realised that the, the skating career was sort of coming to a, an, an end, as, or has that sort of sunk in, do you think, or it's just been such a way of life? Um, well, tonight when I was getting ready to come here, I said to my husband, Frank, I said, that's it. We're not competing anymore. I don't have to worry about anything, like, you know, stress out about, you know, my jumps or anything. I mean, there's Worlds, and but I'm feeling, you know, that pretty confident about Worlds, but after that, I just think... Will that be a swan song? In amateur, I'd say yes, definitely, but we're not sure what's going to happen after that. We're going to have to sit down after Worlds and think about it. Well, we're definitely taking a few months off. But I think it's pretty exciting because, I mean, there's a lot that we really, you know, want to do apart from yeah. skating that we haven't had a chance to do that now we'll be able to tackle. And well, you've both got spouses too, and I'm yeah. sure they've got things planned. And, oh, you'll have things planned for Frank, there'll be no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, before we go any further, let's, because uh, you haven't seen it, have you? No. Um, no I haven't seen let's it. have a look at the routine and we'll take us through it. Here we go. I don't really like watching myself skate. Well, <laughs> you've been here. When they announce your names, what are your feelings? Very nervous at the moment. Thinking, Just listening for the beginning of the music, because that's the worst thing if you miss the very beginning. <laughs> Once it starts, though, everything just starts like clockwork. I was thinking more here of the next element, because it was the triple jump for me. So I was, this is just routine. I don't have to think about that element at all. That's just routine. How many times would you have practiced this whole routine? Countless. Can you, give, no can you give us idea. Any, any idea of a well, number? Well, we do it at least once a day. So, and if we're not, if we don't do a full routine once a day, we do sec sections a couple of times a day. Uh, so I didn't get quite right around that. <laughs> I was a second foot touchdown on Danielle's, but I'm well, glad I got mine done. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you two watch it, and if you see something, yeah. take us through it. Tell us your thoughts and what you're feeling at the time. Well, right now, I was just thinking, I'm glad that's over with. At least I didn't fall over. Now I have to really think, concentrate about pushing off Stephen here because I haven't been doing that risk in the last week. And now I'm thinking here, okay, just practice. It's just like the practice session. <laughs> oh my goodness. Lucky I'm in coming into that I have to really concentrate to relax. I have a tendency to rush the throws sometimes, so I had to really focus a lot about just relaxing. And once I've thrown it, there's nothing I can do and I just have to stand there and it seems to take forever before she lands. <laughs> and it actually it looked better than on TV than from my view, because for me it took forever for her to get that free foot out. <laughs> I'm just thinking, because this is that was the first section done, now we're into the second section. Yeah. And usually we practice the second section just by itself. And it's usually pretty easy. Well, it's got diff two difficult elements in it, but it's we always land them when we practice it. So I was just thinking, it's just the next section and it's not a problem. And then after that, it's home free. Do you realise Do you realise that the crowd is there? Um, in, in parts, like at this point, coming into the throw triple sound, no. All I'm thinking about is, you know, take your time, throw us straight through. It was a little bit slow, so it pulled up on the toe there. But that wasn't a... I can do better than that. Yeah. <laughs> Too late, you can't do it again. But there are sections where you can just relax and, and look into the crowd a bit, but you can never really lose focus 
So I mean, you get completely lost. So you couldn't enjoy the programme with the crowd? <laughs> I'm totally um, different. I look around and see what's going on around me. And yeah. last Olympics, I looked at <laughs> the crowd at mum and dad. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> last, year, uh, last time I looked in the audience and looked at mum and dad and, you know, I just wanted to see what was going on around me and yeah. take it all in. I can do that and still... To moving into the jumps, generally I'm stronger, so it actually, I feel, puts a lot of pressure on me to make sure that I do it. Because there's been, the, you know, a few cases where, oh, Stephen will do the jump, no problem, but we'll see how Danielle goes, and Danielle's landed it and I've missed it. <laughs> and, you know, everyone's had a good laugh. But <laughs> the choreography is so good at this program. Yeah, we're really happy with the way the programs um, come together. I love, like, this is my favourite piece of music. I love it. It's actually mm. off a uh, international diamond commercial. <laughs> You're always thinking ahead, aren't you? <laughs> no, but, um, no, I, our choreographer in the States, he picked the music and then they designed an outfit and we've had, like, three outfits for this program because there's, I wasn't sure. Um, I had one done by Lawrence Shields, who's a designer in Sydney, and right. that worked out really good, but... I have the lady in the States that made it. She didn't quite do exactly what Lawrence wanted and it didn't sort of turn out. I didn't have time for Lawrence to really make it, so um, we decided to just go for a plane and go back to this one. And then... This was the, th the third outfit <laughs> and she only beat it the night before. And it was the cheapest outfit too. <laughs> and all the girls in the change room were laughing at me before I went out there. In the practice session on the day, I was no. telling them all. And you wonder why you have a bit of stress. <laughs> The night before, she's sitting there with the glue no, and tapping true. it on, and she actually did the, the dress laying down. She had it laying down, and she glued the front of the dress <laughs> to the back of the dress, then had to spend a while trying to split the but dress. But the American girls were laughing at me because their dresses were like over a thousand dollars, and they were like, "I can't believe you did that, Danielle." And they just—they know I'm always laughing and carrying on, so they just expect it, I think. There's a good feeling in the dressing room, usually in the pairs, isn't there, for the girls? Yeah, the girls are not like single skaters. <laughs> the feeling now, at this moment. We did Total it. Total exhaustion and just glad that it's over and I don't know. I was like... thinking, who do I have to say hello to everyone on TV? <laughs> Why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> Actually, I mean, we, yeah. we've got to be serious about it because it is serious business, but uh, we've welcomed your spouses over here, Frank, and Bronwyn, mm. and I think all of Australia knows that Frank's had the flu and you've told Australia that his company's been working him too hard. <laughs> but uh, we also put a camera on Frank and Bronwyn during that routine, and you might be interested to hear how they looked and what they had to say. Very interested. Have a look at this. And have a listen. Bloody pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done, Robert. <laughs> Frank's really quiet. He just sits there and doesn't say anything. Well, he's married to you. <laughs> um, seriously, what's it been like for Frank and Bronwyn? I mean, can um, you give Australia an idea, perhaps, of the sacrifices that have had to have been made for you to achieve what you've achieved? Well, I think it's been very different for, for either of them. Yeah. Bronwyn's used to the type of commitment and dedication because she's in musical theatre and and she has to do the same sort of thing and understands, you know, sometimes you have to go somewhere and, and just be there for a couple of hours if, if nothing's happening, like when we're doing Danielle's dresses and things like that. And and a lot of this is new for Frank and, and that's a stress as well. He's not sure, you know, what's going on all the time, but I, he's learned a lot in the last I, last couple of years. I think he's, he's come he's a long been way. He's really great yeah. because... Um, I've been working for a company at home, CPL Freight, and I've had to... I have to say CPL Freight, because they're That's really twice. good to me. That's twice you've <laughs> they give me time off from work and everything. And then I left work in September, you see, and Frank's been supporting me all the way through. So I've been living on one wage. So 
So to do that, that's a big commitment, I think. And I mean, do you ever sit down and count the cost, or does the love of the sport always um, rule? Well, Bronwyn knew how much, you know, Olympics, what it meant to me. And we've just had to try and balance our careers over, the, you know, the last year or so. And we knew that this would be the most difficult time for us. And once we got through this, things would be a lot easier. And it, it's put, you know, a lot of stress on and the phone bills are ginormous. But, you know, it's just something we've had to deal with. <laughs> Just in what now? <laughs> the phone bills are ginormous too. Uh, just in closing, the Russians, uh, the, the two pairs, uh, they were fantastic, weren't they? Yeah, they were they magnificent. Were, they were good. I was a bit disappointed that um, the ones that came second. Fair as no. Yeah. Can you believe the finish? No, it was like that was actually his fault. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't say it was. It? But uh, you know, I was disappointed because they're yeah. a beautiful pair. I reckon they'll go on and they'll win worlds. I don't well, think that took a lot out though, from the judges' point of view. They they had done all their hard stuff and yeah. put together a good program. It was just, you know, a bit of a glitch at the end that was a bit of a damper, but I don't think it really affected too, the marks no. too much. And a great achievement by Dmitriev and uh, Kazakova. Yeah, now he's got two gold medals. And a great achievement by you two, so uh, well done. That's uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, just speaking of the Russians too, they're going to be joining us on this program, if we can ever get you out of the studio, <laughs> a little bit later on. So that's going to be fantastic news. And their coach, Tamara Moskvina. They are going to be joining us on the program. And as far as skating is concerned, don't forget Anthony Liu tomorrow night and uh, the other big name in the sport, Anthony, of course, representing Australia. That's been uh, a major drama really getting him after uh, getting permission from China. Uh, he was freed by that country uh, to skate for the country of his choice. And of course, he chose Australia. Only the right thing to do. That's tomorrow night with Elvis. The king will be in the building. <laughs> and we look forward to you joining us for that. But right now, it's time to turn our attention to Mogul's action because gold is up for grabs as far as both the men and women are concerned. Let's now join Neil Brooks and Marcus Lover. Okay.